Dark matter, we know, it's kind of matter that does not interact through the electromagnetic interaction with ordinary matter. And we know that such a specific kind of exotic matter exists, but we don't know what it's made of. The Coma Cluster is a group of 1,000 galaxies, 330 million light years away. In the 1930s, Swiss astronomer Fritz Zwicky estimated the cluster's mass based on the amount of light it emitted. He realized that its outer galaxies were rotating faster than they should be. German-speaking Zwicky speculated that there must have been some other mass involved in holding these galaxies together at such speeds. He called it Dunkle Materia, or in English, dark matter. Since then, thousands of other observations and experiments have provided evidence that supports the existence of dark matter. But so far, we haven't been able to find any direct evidence of it, which makes it one of the greatest enigmas in modern physics. So coming here, I've been so concerned that, oh, I'm not going to understand this. This may be like rocket science, but it's not rocket science. <laughs> The Large Hadron Collider, located at the European Centre for Nuclear Research, or CERN, is the most powerful particle accelerator in the world. Its primary purpose is to allow for the study of the fundamental nature of the universe. It does this by splashing protons together, releasing energies enough to mimic the conditions that existed at the Big Bang. There are four major experiments positioned around the LHC. The one we're interested in today is 45 metres long, 25 metres in diameter, and weighs about the same as the Eiffel Tower. It's called the ATLAS experiment. What is the ATLAS experiment trying to achieve? So the ATLAS experiment is one of the two general purpose experiments in uh, the LHC, and as such, has, it's been designed and built uh, with the purpose of having the greatest possible range of physical investigation and result possible. And at least for myself, search for phenomena which are still beyond our understanding that have not been discovered yet, if they do exist. Such as? Such as dark matter is a prime candidate for uh, physics beyond the standard model. How can ATLAS help us find dark matter? Well, to answer this question, we need to just very briefly discuss what is dark matter. Well, for dark matter, we know it's a kind of matter that does not interact through the electromagnetic interaction uh, with ordinary matter. And we know that such a specific kind of exotic matter exists from various cosmological evidence, astrophysical evidence, you know, galaxies and galaxy cluster. But we don't know what it's made of. We only know that it's uh, five times more abundant in the universe than the ordinary matter. And if the only way that uh, dark matter interacts with itself and with ordinary matter is gravitational, then we may never observe it. And we may never produce it in collider experiments such as the LHC and ATLAS. If dark matter interacts with ordinary matter, beats how much weakly that would be, then it means that it can be produced in a collider such as the LHC. And if it can be produced, then it can also be observed if you're good enough, and it can also be studied. Dark matter is often called the invisible glue that holds our universe together. It's believed that it affects not only the speed and rotation of galaxies, but also distortion of light and the structure of the universe itself. Some theories suggest it may even connect everything together in a vast cosmic web. It seems to me you guys have set yourself an impossible task. Well, I would disagree with that assessment. <laughs> Glad you do. <laughs> it's a difficult task. It's, it's a great task that we have to uh, rise up every day. And especially since we are trying to deduce the existence of, of something in a way you can make an analogy from its shadow. You don't see the murderer, you see the shadow. And actually for, uh, for collider experiments, you can argue that most of the time you don't observe what you're looking for. I mean, even the Higgs boson, which was the, in a way, is the crowning achievement for the LHC so far. Uh, we, we can say that we have never observed the Higgs boson in the flesh. We have observed its decay products. Atlas was one of two major experiments designed to find the Higgs boson. 
a particle that would prove the entire universe is permeated by a field which gives mass to subatomic particles. That success happened in 2012. First of all, I think it's a great day for particle physics. So 100 meters below here yes. is the Atlas experiment. Right. And watch this, this is super cool. Oh, that is cool. The Atlas control room. All monitoring the experiment now. Yes, basically we have always 24 hours, seven days of the week, taking care of all the part of the detectors. So we have inner detectors, calorimeters, muon detectors. We have one in charge of the security, another in charge of something very important, which is the trigger that knows which events are nice to record. So this is the Atlas detector. Yeah. It has this very nice onion shell structure. It's super symmetric. This is where the proton comes, like from this pipe. And then, okay, in the the closest detector or subdetector close to the beam pipe is called the inner detector, which is shown here in blue. The inner detector captures the trace, the traces, like the tracks of the charged particles. So you can see like muons, electrons, tracks. So this is because when the when the protons collide, that creates enough energy to generate a lot of other particles. Yes, actually the protons are coming almost at the velocity of the light with a lot of energy and when they collide they transfer all this energy and then they are able to produce a lot of particles. Atlas has six different detecting subsystems wrapped in layers around the collision point where it can record the trajectory, energy and momentum of particles. Momentum is a fundamental aspect of physics. It describes the motion of an object using this equation, where P is momentum, M is mass, and V is the velocity of the object. The ATLAS team may be able to find clues about dark matter by observing whether there is any momentum from collisions not accounted for in something called the transverse plane. So let me try and understand this idea of the transverse plane. The beams are coming this way, and the transverse plane is perpendicular to that. Why is that plane so important in this experiment? Because that's the only plane where, that we are very sure that before the collision, the momentum sum is zero. So if we have two protons that come in this direction, in the transverse plane, the momentum, the energy has to be zero before the collision. And after the collision, we have a lot of particles. So at the end of the collision, it has to be also zero because before it was zero, after it was zero. So what we try to do is to reconstruct very well all the products of the, after the collision, all the particles. And if there is something missing, if there is energy missing that bring us this balance of the momentum, this can come from a particle that we didn't see. For example, a dark matter particle. It's so important because that's the only plane where, that we are very sure that before the collision, the momentum sum is zero. So we are super sure that the missing transverse momentum that we are seeing, that we are reconstructing, it's coming actually from unseen objects such as dark matter. The LHC has now been operational for over 10 years, but it has not yet provided conclusive evidence of the existence of dark matter. That's despite the fact that collisions are happening at a rate that is measured in nanoseconds, or billionths of a second. Every 25 nanoseconds, you are having a collision, and all these particles are flying out, and you don't know which one of those collisions might relate to dark matter. How is that possible for you to keep track of all that information? Yes, and it's very related to the trigger. The trigger is this way of selecting which collision is interesting and which one is not that interesting. Because sometimes the proton didn't collide like very well, or there is like a lot of particles, but not with a very high momentum. So there is a trigger in the detector, a hardware trigger that says interesting, not interesting, interesting, not interesting. But then there is a 
software trigger that tries to super fast and tries to save these events that has interesting particles. And then you have to have a very big farm of supercomputers that tries to save all of this information all over the world. So I've been reading, trying to understand before I came here, and up until recently, the most likely candidate was called a WIMP, funnily enough, a weakly interacting massive particle. Is that still the case? Well, we're still looking for the weakly interacting massive particles, but since we haven't found it yet, it makes sense to think that maybe this dark matter is not just one particle. It can be a compound particle formed by other particles, or it can be coming from a dark sector, a composite sector that is also rich in phenomenology. The dark sector, it sounds so exciting, so mystical. Yes. <laughs> Then the problem is how to detect these particles. They have to be connected through the standard model by some sort of mechanism. So that's why we also think on mediators, some particles that serve as a bridge, as a connection of this hidden dark sector with the visible sector. While the science of dark matter is shrouded in unknowns and near impossible challenges, it continues to attract young scientists to the field. Like Zhe Wei Wang, he's from the Chinese city of Lanzhou and is now doing his postdoctoral research at the Atlas experiment through the University of Michigan. It just seems like an impossible task. You're looking for a particle we can't see and it only interacts at the best very weakly with the particles we know about. And there's so much else, like, as you said, experimental errors. How can you possibly ever find this? So here I would like to mention about another very important part of dark matter searches in colliders, which is the close collaboration between experimentalists like us and the theorists. So for example, dark matter is like a person that we want to find, but we don't know how the person looks like. What the theorists do, and together with us, is to try, based on our best knowledge, try to make a sketch of the person, containing some features of the person that we can use these features to optimize our analysis. So we know it's challenging. So that's the reason people spend decades to improve our detection accuracy of the missing energy and to try to have a good handle of the search for dark matter. The people at the LHC are looking at the fundamental aspects of our reality, things that we might never be able to see or even perceive. For such a complex task, the technology needs to be constantly upgraded. Parts need to be replaced, safety checks must be carried out, and future research needs to be planned and experiments upgraded. That's so the scientists can run even more powerful collisions, smashing particles at magnitudes we never thought possible. So this is why the LHC closes and the experiments close down every two or three years and recalibrate your experiments. Yes, so the accelerator will be upgraded to reach higher energies. So for example, currently the energy reaches 13.6 TeV. It's slightly uh, larger than the previous five years in the uh, first and the second running period. And in the meantime, our detectors are also trying to upgrade. So you're a young man, you're at the beginning of your career. Do you think by the end of your career, you will attend a conference or hopefully give the conference that says we have found dark matter? We should try our best. And, uh, but what we, we are doing now is still very meaningful. It can narrow down the possibilities of dark matter. Because 10 years before, there are so many possibilities and the way can uh, make it more efficient for theorists to think of the new possibilities and uh, to develop new theories and uh, to deepen our understanding of the dark matter. The thing is that we don't know if it's going to happen soon or how many years it will take. We are looking everywhere. There are detectors underground, detector, detectors in satellites. We are trying to produce dark matter at LHC in CMS, in Atlas. All of us, we are trying to search dark matter. And I hope that at some point in my life, I can see the discovery of dark matter. It's frustrating a bit, but it's exciting also. What I can say is that if dark matter is not found, 
it will remain the main or one of the main avenues for research throughout the likely time span of my career because we know it does exist that is the point many other theories are compelling but they are not so say heavily grounded in observational evidence we're probably swimming in dark matter right now as we speak we just don't know what it is and we just need to find the right place to look for it I hate this question, but as a science journalist, I feel obliged to ask it. Why do we care? Why bother? Because it's there, right? I mean, there is no reason for it, right? It's just the pursuit of knowledge and understanding of the world that surrounds us is so enshrined in human nature that we literally cannot resist.